coming to you live from inside the Neil Morgan Auditorium at the San Diego Central Library at Joan and Irwin Jacobs Common and streaming around the world. Welcome to the second annual Shorties, presented by the Library Shop and the San Diego Public Library Foundation. And now, please welcome your host for this evening, Library Shop Scott. Oh, wow, it's already going great, isn't it? Uh, not only am I the host tonight, I'm also the DJ, so that's exciting. Uh, apologize for the audio at the beginning there, but good evening and welcome to the second annual Shorties, San Diego's shortest and weirdest awards gala to celebrate the fifth annual Matchbook Story Contest, which is San Diego's shortest and quirkiest short story contest. So I am Library Shop Scott, I'm your host this evening. I work for the San Diego Public Library Foundation, which is a nonprofit which advocates for and fundraises for the San Diego Public Library system. I manage the library shop, which is about 200 feet away from you, uh, just outside the auditorium. If you're watching online, you can visit us at libraryshopsd.org. Uh, open all the time online. Our entire inventory is on there. So check us out. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. This will be a great event, uh, the shorties takes the normal three-hour awards gala and all of the excitement, anxiety, and inevitably the regret and bitterness of having not won, and it condenses that all into 45 minutes, 40 minutes. So that's exciting. Uh, let's see. Uh, you may have noticed already that there's been some production improvements uh, versus last year. So last year's Shorties was broadcast live from my spare bedroom. Uh, this year we're here at the beautiful Neil Morgan Auditorium. Uh, audio upgrades coming soon, so stay tuned for that. Uh, let's see, what else has changed? Uh, last year was a totally virtual event. This year we are doing a hybrid event, so we have a small select group of contestants and nominees who have decided to make the drive down here to be disappointed rather than to be disappointed at home. So thank you for being here. Thank you for all the people that are watching virtually. Uh, let's see, what else has changed this year? Uh, you know, uh, the pandemic. Last year there was a pandemic. This year, don't hear so much about it, so that's great to be moving on too soon, Patrick. Okay. Uh, last year's opening monologue was one joke, and that was the joke that the monologue was one joke because it was the shorties. I thought that was a really good joke. Uh, this year, there are several jokes, a few of which have already bombed. Uh, so what we are making up for in quality, we are giving you more quantity this year. Uh, speaking of quantity, last year's uh, Matchbook Story Contest, we had about 300 entries. This year, we had nearly 400 entries. So the most ever, thank you. It was very exciting, especially for library shop staff who all had to read 400 short stories uh, before we sent the finalists to the Blue Ribbon Panel of Judges, who are our past champions. They selected a winners, the winner from uh, the stories that we gave them. Uh, let's see, what else has changed since last year? Uh, speaking of quantities, I got that. Oh, you know what? Not all the changes have been positive. Um, not all the changes have been positive. Last year, we raised about $1,500 for the San Diego Public Library through the entry fees. This year, the contest was free. So uh, we raised $0 for the library. So there have been some budget cuts in the show tonight, so I apologize about that. Uh, speaking of budget cuts, this is a pivot. Did you know that uh, last year's fiscal budget for the city, uh, fiscal year budget for the city of San Diego uh, called for nearly six million dollars in cuts to the San Diego Public Library system. That's about, thank you, that's about 10 percent of the library's budget was up for cuts, uh, which if you've worked in the library system as long as uh, we have, you realize that the only thing left to cut is hours and staff, so it would have been a devastating situation to have those cuts. Luckily, the San Diego Public Library Foundation, who I work for, in partnership with folks like you, advocates, uh, our partners at the Friends of the Library and through the Libraries Transform SD Coalition, 
uh, we were able to rally the troops and lobby to our city council and let them know how important library funding is and will be in the future. And so we were able to avoid all of the cuts last fiscal year. In fact, for the first time in over a decade, the city council voted to increase the materials budget for the San Diego Public Library System. So if you've been to any library shop events before, you've heard me rant about our materials budget. So before this recent modest increase, first in over a decade, the San Diego Public Library System had the lowest per capita, per capita materials budget of any uh, major library system in America. So since the increase, which we're very excited and pleased about, we are now a third from bottom. So apologies to Houston and Philadelphia. We now have a larger materials budget than you do per capita, uh, but there's still a long ways to go. And so if you'd like to join the fight, uh, it's not just about books and materials. It's about all funding for libraries. Uh, visit supportmylibrary.org or libraries.transformsd.org. If you're in the studio audience tonight, uh, back of the house on your way out, there's some information for you. There's postcards. So what we did last year is we sent stacks and stacks of postcards uh, to city council and let them know how important library funding is. Really easy to do, just write a note. It's all addressed for you. Throw it in the mail. So that makes a big difference. Uh, so libraries.transformsd.org and supportmylibrary.org are two places to go if you want to join the fight to cause some good trouble to help protect our San Diego Public Library system. So uh, let's get started with the show. So first of all, is Christina Schaefer, did she show up? Christina, great. Okay, so uh, last year's shorties, we started a tradition, uh, since it's only the second year, uh, it's a tradition, sure. Uh, we honored past winners. So last year, 2017's winner, Tara Gilboy, uh, did an interview with us. And so this year, I would like to bring up Christina Schaefer, who was our 2018 Matchbook Story winner. And as you're coming up, I'll read your story. Who stole my youth? The, oh, that's the wrong one. Oh, dear. There was no walkthrough today. Uh, this is Christina's story. The smell of garlic sizzling woke me up. Mom was home. Hadn't seen her in four days. Mahjong. Sometimes she won, mostly she didn't. I dressed for school. At least I got fried rice and spam this morning. So that's Christina's amazing story. Pull up a chair. We'll pretend we're having a fireside chat and we'll be six foot distance. Let me get you a microphone. Try that one. Hello. Hello. It's nice to meet you in person. So last year you were going to make it virtually and we ran into a little trouble. Yeah. But uh, what I wanted to ask you was uh, how did winning the Matchbook story uh, change your life? I'm assuming it must have. <laughs> um. <laughs> and we, we didn't, there was no uh, walkthrough for this, so this is all. Um. I guess it just gave me really great bragging rights. And then I um, was able to share the matchbooks with everybody I knew and tell them all about, yep, <laughs> and tell them all about the contest. And, you know, like personally, I don't think it changed my life in a big way, but any little thing that can just empower you and make you feel proud of yourself and you know, all the good things that you get for being recognized for just sharing a few words is always a great thing. That's, that's very interesting. Last year's champ, uh, the 2017 champion also mentioned that uh, there were no measurable impact or changes to their life either. <laughs> so that's disappointing, but uh, maybe the library has impacted your life. Do you have any uh, stories from your childhood that are memories of the library? Fingers crossed. Okay, yeah. Um, so I love the library. I've always loved libraries. I love the smell of books, and I love hard copy books. And the, the most impactful time that the library was great for me was when I grew up. I grew up in a neighborhood that wasn't close to a library. And every two weeks, a bookmobile library, a mobile library would come to our neighborhood. 
and I was little, I, I would just run to that, <laughs> that van and jump in, and the person there would help me find books, and it really made a difference, you know, having books come to my neighborhood and come to me. I don't even know if you guys have those anymore, but it was... We, we don't, but we do have the guy who drove them, yeah, so he still there. works for us. <laughs> So yeah, that was, that was an amazing time for me, and I remember it, and I've written about it um, in blog posts for, for school and stuff like that, so it was really cool. Awesome. Uh, Christina Schaefer, you're an amazing champion. Uh, you continue to serve the Matchbook Story Contest by being one of our judges, and thank you for being here tonight, and it was great to meet you and talk to you. Oh, it was my you. honor. Thank you so much. And I'll play your... Uh, I'll play Christina's as she leaves the stage here. This is a, a snippet of the song that librarian Pete Meisner wrote for Christina based on her short story last year. I'm also the gaffer and the roadie today, so hold on. Play the rest Sometimes of it as we leave tonight. Won, mostly she didn't. Okay, awkward transition, right? Uh, we now have a amazing treat. So Michelle Garb, you're with us in the crowd. Uh, please stand and be recognized as the champion of the 2020 Mass Book Story Contest. There she is, everybody. So she. Um, she had a great story last year, and um, oh, oh my goodness, she had a great story last year, and she also gave the best ever speech in Shorty's history, best acceptance speech. It was also the only acceptance speech, but I suspect that we will never top what she said. Uh, so she came on on the crowdcast and gave her acceptance speech. It was very succinct in the spirit of the Matchbook Story Contest. It was two words, I'm speechless. So tonight, to honor your victory, uh, in the tradition of last year we set the other stories to music, this year we've gone one step further, and uh, we've decided to hire an opera singer to present your, a musical aria of your story, the 2020 Matchbook Story winning story. So ladies and gentlemen, Victoria Robertson. Wow, wow. Uh, thank you so much, Victoria. So uh, one of the questions I had in my life was how do you hire an opera singer? And the answer is you ask a librarian. So they gave me your contact information. I reached uh, out to you out of the blue and uh, this bizarre journey began for you. So thank you for doing this. 
Uh, I will point out this is not your main gig. You also have a nonprofit that you run in addition to your singing and stuff. Tell us about that. Let me just say how much I enjoyed learning and working on this song. It was very challenging. There were so many lyrics. But fortunately, I had a little cheat sheet, so I didn't make any mistakes. No, I'm, I am very pleased to find ways to bring opera to the community, not only by singing porch concerts from my front porch every Sunday during the quarantine, but I also have a nonprofit called Opera for Kids, and we present fun and funny little stories using traditional opera music, rather like this, with new words and new stories. So if you're curious about that, please check out opera, the number four, kids.com. And I did, I binge watched your porch performances because they're all on YouTube. What is the YouTube account that people can find them at? Victoria Robertson, like the son of Robert. Victoria Robertson. So YouTube slash Victoria Robertson. And yeah, I did some handy camera work there. About four cameras. I edited the whole thing so you can experience that if you want to relive the quarantine. No. Well, Victoria, thank you so much for crafting a custom thank aria you. for Michelle. Um, I don't think we can top it next year, but uh, thank you for being here. I can sing higher, so we'll okay, top it. Okay, yeah, yeah, there you go. We'll break glasses. We'll break glasses. So thank you. And uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the point in the evening where some of us have been waiting for. I was actually waiting for the opera singer. I think we pretty much peaked at this point, but I have a team of very talented, very dear friends of mine to perform and reveal for the first time the semifinalists, the 10 semifinalists or finalists for the 2021 Matchbook Story Contest. So we are going to reveal who the finalists are through a dramatic reading by our friends from Right Out Loud San Diego. So if you guys want to come up, and Veronica has been a great supporter of the library over the years. Right Out Loud has performed many times here at the library. So Veronica, how are you guys doing, and uh, what's new at Right Out Loud? Well, we are about to do a holiday program on the 13th of December. It's called Giving Season Christmas in New York, and it's at 7 o'clock on Monday at Old Town Theater, and I snuck just a little pile of flyers for that out on the foundation's table, so sorry. Perfect, no problem. But if you would like to have more um, information about that, grab a flyer, it has our website on it, and if you go to our website, you will find, if you have hours, the many, many things that we do. We, we do a lot of partnering with the library during COVID. We partnered with Recording Stories that the librarians selected, and we, we sent those out all over the country, actually. And that program is called Listen to This. We still record stories three times a week and send them for free all over the place. And you can sign up for that on our website. We do lots of educational programs. We just love reading aloud. And when is the show? What? When is the show? <laughs> Monday, the 13th of December at 7 o'clock. At Old Town Theater. So that's my partner and one of our board members. So they wanted to make sure you got all Just that keeping information. keeping your talking points. I need somebody that keeps my talking points online, too. Yeah, so. good idea, yeah. right? That's why I keep Walter around. So, uh, Veronica, uh, for those of you watching on the virtual stream, pay attention to uh, see if your name is called. Those of you who've joined us here, thank you for being here. Veronica, why don't you reveal the final 10 stories of the 2021 Matchbook Story Contest. So are you good with us doing that one at a time? I think you should, uh, we should have 10 people read the 10 stories simultaneously and just let the viewers figure it out. Is that an option or we uh, didn't, we didn't do a walkthrough, so. I don't think that's gonna work. Yes, do it however you would like to present okay. them to us. It is your show. So I have some fabulous people here with me. On the far left is Ross Porter, who is a native San Diegan from many generations. And if you want to know anything about San Diego history, Ross Porter is the man to ask. Next to Ross is my partner and co-founder of Write Out Loud, Walter Ritter, 
who is not only the best cold reader I have ever heard, he is a fabulous reader and storyteller, and uh, have been, he has been doing a partnership with the San Diego Public Library tied to their Misbreed project, going to libraries all across the city and performing a Japanese storytelling form called Kami Shibai, which means paper theater. That's just one of our library partnerships. And next to him is Stephen Lone. He is an amazing actor who has performed on stages all over the city, the county, and we are so grateful to have him as one of our regular performers, Stephen Lone. So gentlemen, please join me. This first one is by Timothy Calloway. Never was one for shots, avoided them mostly. Had one every now and then, but not often. Then COVID came and I had one. Then another, now I can't get enough. Barkeep! By Abby Kutzman. She was lost. She was surrounded by snow and her paws stung. Her nose was cold and dry. Her owner had left her. She walked along the snow and she stuck her cold muzzle to the ground smelling the cooking of codfish far away. She started to run toward the smell. Walter, let me interject real quick. I forgot to mention in my intro that uh, Abby's story, she's eight years old. So uh, this year's story entries, we ran the gamut from eight years old, her 10-year-old sister also entered a story, and then we had a woman who was 92 years old who sent us a story in handwritten letter form and said she'd never used a computer in her life and she had no interest in learning. So she mailed it in. So thank you to everybody who entered All Walks of Life, All Ages. Sorry I jumped in. Continue, thank you. By Ossuary Commissary. He considered himself a memoir, too complex to be a vignette. He did not want to live to become an autobiography. Memoir would do. That evening, he concluded his story. I believe this is our shortest story by Susan Hammond. Bipolar sexual abuse survivor sings anyway. By David Smolar. What's that in your hands? The child asked. It's a book, I said. What does it do? By itself, nothing. But open and read and it can take you anywhere. You don't have to charge it? Nope. Find Wi-Fi? Nope. Password? Nope. Just turn the pages. Wow, that's like magic. by Sarah Hilliard. Imagine yourself as a frog on a lily pad. The soothing voice murmurs in my ear. Obediently, I picture it, slimy and cold. I'm adrift in a polluted pond. A heron's lethal beak looms. My legs prepare to leap, but it's too late. I delete the meditation app. By Maureen Townsend, her hand trembled on the door handle as it creaked ominously, and a dim light flickered. Suddenly, a chill air swept over her face, and the hairs on her neck stood on end. Her fears were realized. It was true. Someone ate the last of the ice cream.
Brian Burke. With me, it's the shoes. Get them off, and the socks, and the threshold is crossed. The day's responsibilities are over. My father would come home from work, drop his work pants, step out, then sit in his recliner in his underwear. Such was the weight of his responsibilities. By Felice Dada. You, you ignited the flame in my heart. Close cover before striking. Finally, by Benjamin Jenkins. They say Lego means play well in Dutch. But I think it's really a cuss word. Every parent knows what it's like to step on one. Now, I can imagine a Dutch parent exclaiming, holy Lego, my foot. Now that I think about it, this might also explain their wooden shoes. Ladies and gentlemen, right out loud, San Diego, and your finalist for the Matchbook Story Contest. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, let's see. We are, uh, once again, second year in a row, we are right on time. I, as, as awkward and reckless as this production appears on the surface, it is a well-oiled machine. So I am proud to announce that now is the time to reveal the winner of the Matchbook Story Contest. And to help me do that, I would like to introduce my boss, the CEO of the San Diego Public Library Foundation, Mr. Patrick Stewart. So, Patrick, I thought this would be less awkward being in person than it was it's last not, year. It's worse. It's not, yeah, it's much worse. So, I think uh, this is honestly the first in-person event that I have uh, spoken at. First in-person event. In a year and a half. What an ignominious way to begin. It is. Yes. It's very, very interesting. But congratulations to you, congratulations to all of you. The most uh, successful shorties season, the most uh, in, you know, amount of entries that you've received, and uh, the, I, what did I hear you say, the youngest and the oldest. From age eight to 92? Maybe I should give you this I mic. This mic a, is really hot. Christmas song? <laughs> eight to 92? Yeah, isn't that we'll, we'll do a I duet so. next year, I think. I think so. Yeah. Well, I'm, and I'm certainly not gonna try to sing anything by any means. Um, thank, oh, <laughs> thank you all need them. I also want to thank, uh, uh, right out loud, Walter and Veronica. I've known Walter and Veronica for many, many years and how grateful we are to have them support yet again another shorty season and support all of the work that you all do um, with the library. Thank you very, very much. Um, we all know that libraries and librarians are leaders in our community. I certainly don't need to remind anyone here of that. Uh, I just wanted to give you a brief update to complement uh, all of the amazing work that libraries and librarians have been doing, especially this year, to uh, create exhibits, lectures, and engagement opportunities for the city of San Diego. Uh, the foundation is going to sponsor an, another year-end event this year, but this is going to be a special year-end event that will focus specifically on the role that librarians, excuse me, play as leaders in our community. Uh, we featured three speakers that will elaborate more on their library leadership and the amazing work that they do every day. Emily Deary uh, will speak on her role in supporting patrons in the youth and family space. Val Hardy will talk on the many ways that libraries serve adult learners. And Bonnie Domingos will talk about how libraries lead the way in creating lasting cultural opportunities such as this uh, in our communities every day throughout the year. Um, this event is December 16th at 5 o'clock. It will be held virtually, like it was last year. And attendees will be encouraged uh, to participate with their favorite celebratory drink while we hear from and recognize these amazing library leaders. Information is on our website, supportmylibrary.org. Certainly do. Um, hope to see you all there on the 16th. Um, two more quick things. Uh, next year, the Library Foundation will be celebrating 20 years a uh, big portion of what the Library Foundation had been formed to do was to, of course, you know, support the uh, building of the new Central Library, and since then, 
uh, all of the amazing programs that happen not only here at Central Library, but across the system. And uh, you know, one of the most important things that we've been focused on recently is the advocacy, as Scott was talking about, the advocacy for our library system and the equitable distribution of library resources and programs across the entire city. And again, I want to echo what Scott was saying. You know, please do visit us at Libraries Transform SD or supportmylibrary.org and find different ways that you can get involved as a library champion, as an advocate for your library system, and join us next year as we celebrate 20 years supporting our library um, and lifting up our voices as champions and advocates for all of the amazing work that libraries do. And now, Yes, so uh, put, let's put the microphone on the stand. All and right. Get going here. Ladies and gentlemen. I have the pleasure of announcing the 2021 Shorty of the Year. <laughs> Sarah Hilliard. Imagine yourself as a frog on a lily pad, the soothing voice murmurs in my ear. Obediently, I picture it, slimy and cold. I am adrift in a polluted pond. A heron's lethal beak looms. My legs prepare to leap, but it is too late. I delete the meditation app. Sarah, congratulations. Are you with us this evening? Sarah, come on up, come on up, give a speech. Thank you. So Sarah, you are the winner of the 2021 Matchbook Story Contest. Here is your $50 gift card to the library shop. Your story will be published in the Library Connections newsletter read by over 200,000 San Diegans. And best of all, your story will be exhibited uh, once we get the matchbooks printed, your story will be exhibited inside the tiny book display in the rare book room on the ninth floor for eternity, where you will live in the hall of matchbook story champions forever and ever. Uh, do you have any words of wisdom or for us or anything to say? Um, thank you, and the library is my favorite place in the world. Yes! <laughs> Thank you very much, and thank you everyone for attending the 2021 Shorties, and we will see you next year. Thank you.